everybody. Welcome to the Sense of Things podcast. And today uh, we have a guest and a friend of mine, uh, Fred Moskowitz on. Uh, Fred is an expert in note investing, uh, mortgage note investing. And uh, he and I were talking the other day and I decided I wanted to bring him onto the show to share some of these ideas. You know, once again, the whole show is created to really open your eyes to all investment opportunities uh, to help you you know, run your own portfolio better and help you just, you know, improve your knowledge. And this is one of those types of situations. So Fred, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you, Jeff. It's great to be here. Glad to have you on. Um, yeah, I, I think your area of expertise is just something that is, it's so little is known about it by the general public. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully today this will help people understand a little bit better. So why don't we kick it off? Uh, just tell us a little bit, you know, quick background for you and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, thank you. A little background about me. Jeff, I started out uh, with a very long, successful career working yeah. as a computer engineer. Right. And I, I loved it so much. I spent years working at different technology and startup companies. It was really an exciting time. Mm -hmm. And what happened was I watched my entire industry get turned up upside down during the bursting of the dot com bubble. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, right around that time, we had the September 11th terrorist attacks. Yep. So there was all of this turmoil in the world and uh, financial uncertainty. And especially in the tech industry, the tech industry was in shambles around mm. that time. And for and quite so a while afterwards, too. It, it was. It was. And that made me realized that I was way too dependent on the income from my job. And even though I love the work I was doing, the jobs I had always were full of all of these circumstances completely out of my control. And what I learned was that no matter how talented of an engineer I was or how valuable of an employee I was, if things were not going well at the company or financially in the industry, I could quickly lose my job through no fault of my own. And so I came to this realization, Jeff, that I needed to have other sources of income so that I would not be dependent on the paycheck for my job because that was just a huge risk. And so that started me down the path to pursuing alternative investments. I was interested to invest in assets, buying and building assets that I could own and control, and they would generate income for me. And so it's a way to get paid while you wait or while you do you do other activities. And that was very appealing to me. Yeah. So how did you get started? Did you get started in more of the traditional real estate route or the route that you've ended up in? I did. I absolutely got started in in traditional real estate route, yeah. uh, because as I mentioned, I was pursuing cash flow and I started building up a rental portfolio, but also along with that, I was investing in myself. I was in education. Okay. Um, I joined my local real estate investor group and I was around a lot of veteran investors and in, in a great environment for growth and learning. And one of the workshops I attended was um, where I started learning about node investing. Mm -hmm. And um, a few years after that, I started to have opportunities coming to me through relationships that I had where I could buy notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what really what got me started. I found it a, a very attractive investment. And here's why, because with note, note investing, you're investing in an asset that's backed by hard collateral. It's backed and secured by real estate. Mm -hmm. And along with that, you could buy them at a discount. And uh, the third point was that you could earn quite a high rate of return. And so with those three components, it was very appealing to me. So let's talk a little bit about how how a note gets created. So, you know, there, there's the typical bank that might issue, yeah. you know, issue mortgages and they might keep them as a portfolio loan. 
Um, how does, you know, a lot of the ones that you're working with, where do they come from originally? Where are they originated? They are originated by, uh, by banks and traditional lenders. Okay. And here's something that, that happens. Notes and mortgages are bought and sold every single day on the mm-hmm. secondary market. And I'm sure many of, many of you listeners out there can relate to this. Have you ever bought a property with financing or maybe refinanced a a mortgage. And what often happens is that you start making your payments after closing. And sometimes within three to six months after that, all of a sudden you get a letter from the lender saying, dear Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, please be advised that your loan is being sold. And here's the contact information of the new lender starting next month. Please make, send your payments to them. And uh, by the way, don't worry, none of the terms of your financing will change. Your interest rate is the same. Your payment is the same. Everything's the same. Uh, and so don't be concerned about that. However, please make your payments starting next month to the new lender. And so this happens all the time. Yeah. Right. And what what goes on behind the scenes is that loans are um, originated and then they're sold off and packaged into mortgage backed securities or other financial um, companies buy them on Wall Street. And so this is huge secondary market. And what people don't realize is that individual investors can also participate in this. They can go and and buy notes on the secondary market. And that's the area that um, that we focus on in our business. Very cool. Uh, So, you know, typically, you know, normal mortgage uh, up front, mostly interest. Um, yes. On the backside, you start getting your principal back. It works exactly the same for the note investor, correct? That's absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. When, when with the note investor, you are essentially stepping into the shoes of the bank. Okay. You're taking over a payment stream. And so the way it's set up, if it's set up with a, a 30 year amortization and wherever it was left off from the prior owner of that note. That's where you pick up. And so you just Mm. step right in and continue receiving that payment stream. And so uh, the, the amortization schedule does not change. It just Mm. continues on exactly as it was when the loan was set up. Yeah. So how is tax treatment on these type of investments work? Well, that's a great question. Uh, Tax treatment with note investing is is um it's taxed it's taxed um and, and let, me, let me tell you if you're successful as a note investor you're going to get hit with with tax <laughs> liability it generates a lot of tax liability and you know that's a good thing that means you're making money you're making profit sure. right yeah. but uh unlike traditional real estate investing where you have deductions, you have depreciation, all, all of these uh, tax benefits. With note investing, all you have is interest income and capital gains, and that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And so it generates, it's an activity that generates tax liability. And so that's why um, I love and feel this is so important, some strategies that you can incorporate with note investing by investing out of a retirement account, a tax advantage account, which helps to offset this tax liability. And it either defers your tax, or if you're using a Roth IRA, you pay no tax at all, which is really powerful. And we can get more more in detail about that. But yeah. uh, that's definitely a, a big consideration. It's Node investing generates tax liability for sure. Yeah, and in most cases, if you're going to buy a note, it's straight up outright. There's no way of financing it or anything like that. You're you're paying cash for that investment, right? That's correct. You're paying cash for that. Yes. Cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. You know, it's, mm-hmm. okay. Let's say I've got a big 401k that I've rolled over. I've got it in an IRA account. Mm-hmm. How would I invest in 
notes from that. Well, there's, uh, yeah, there, there's really two strategies um, for investing in notes to, to, to get started. And this applies whether you're using a retirement account or, or not, right? Yeah. It, it's, and it, the w first way is you can go out into the secondary market as an investor and buy individual notes and start building a portfolio. And that's the active approach. If you're interested in actively performing due diligence and analysis and then managing managing the portfolio, that's the approach. Now, another strategy is you can invest in a managed note fund. And what a note fund is, it's where the fund managers raise capital and that from investors, they pool that all together and then they will go out into the secondary market and buy notes now in a bulk quantity because mm -hmm. they're working with a lot more capital. And some of the benefits of that are that um, because they're buying in quantity, they can negotiate a better discount. They can get Sorry. better access to notes, right? It's... Basically, that you're you're now shopping shopping at a different different store, yeah. and um, so with a, a managed note fund, the fund manager and their team they manage the notes, they take care of all the due diligence, and so for the investor, they benefit from the the experience, the expertise, the relationships, the access to notes by participating that way. And so th those are the two strategies. Really, one is active and one is passive. And there's no right or wrong a answer yeah. about that. It just depends on each individual and what your your interests are. If you have a lot of time and you want to get into the business hands-on, then you go the active approach. Now, if you are a, a business owner or a busy professional that you don't have a lot of time, or you don't have uh, experience and you prefer to work with with uh, more seasoned professionals, then you can look at a note fund. And mm -hmm. so those are the, the two approaches. And then if you're using, back to your original question, if you're using a retirement account, mm -hmm. you the, the, the general process is you move your retirement account into a self-directed custodian. Um, you're not going to be able to do this if if you have an IRA at a, a brokerage house or a traditional um, financial in institution. They only allow you to invest in stock market investments, right? Yeah. But if you move your account to what's called a self-directed custodian, they allow you to self-direct, and that allows you to invest in alternatives like real estate, you could buy rental properties or invest in uh, real estate deals or do lending or buy notes. Notes is probably the most uh, prevalent investment and asset owned in self-directed retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. And so that's really the way to do it. The retirement account buys the note or invests in a note fund, and then the payments come back into the retirement account. And so for the account holder, it's a hands arm's length transaction. It's hands off. The mm -hmm. custodian takes care of everything and the uh, accounting and, and uh, paperwork and um, maintains the integrity of your retirement account. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so, you know, let's talk through the process. Okay. So I buy a note, mm -hmm. um, the reason most things are amortized the way they are is most people or a, a large majority of people might refinance during that yeah. note, you know, during that period of time and all that. When that happens, what basically occurs for you as a note investor? Yeah, that's a great question. And you, you are absolutely right, Jeff. Think about this. The, this is a United States statistic. The average yeah. life of a mortgage loan in the United States, it's five to seven years. <laughs> Even though that might be a 15 year term or 30 year term. Yeah. I, I, un, now I, i saw news that 40 year mortgages are coming out. So it's even a longer term, 
but the average life of a mortgage note is five to seven years. And so it's, um, it's something that, that happens. If you are a note investor, you're going to have notes that you buy and then they're going to get, they're going to get paid off either the borrower refinances or the borrower sells the property, right? Maybe they're, um, move up, upsizing or downsizing, or they move, mm. move for, for employment reasons, job opportunities, right? A lot, a lot of reasons. You yeah. never know. You never know when that happens. But here's here's what will happen, though. When a loan gets paid off, um, there's going to be there's going to be a, a call that comes in from the title company that's handling the closing. Either it's a refinance or or uh, the property's being sold. They'll request a payoff statement that has to be mm. sent out to them, and then the title company takes care of all the details. They uh, collect the money. They send. They send the funds, and then um, the lender has to release the lien by recording in the public record a satisfaction of the mortgage. And so that puts it on title that the lien is being released, and now the um, the property can pass with with clear title to the next mm. step. And so that's that's what happens. But a very important uh, element of this is uh, for us, we use loan servicing companies to yeah, manage all of our notes. Yeah, very <laughs> important, very important role. And they take care of all of that. They take care of preparing the payoff statement. They take care of coordinating the release of the lien. And it's it's very important. It's one of the most important vendors that we use as note mm -hmm. investors because the loan servicing company, they keep track of the accounting on the note. They take uh, care of receiving the payments from the borrower. They take care of answering phone calls from the borrower. All of that frontline interaction is handled by the servicing company. And a great analogy I can share is the the same way that a property manager manages a rental property on behalf mm -hmm. of the owner the note servicing company manages the note on behalf of the lender. And so working with them, this allows uh, investors to really scale up a portfolio because now you can, you can offset and um, outsource the day-to-day -day management of the notes and only be involved as needed, which really is uh, is a huge huge load administratively to uh, yeah. take off your plate. Well, it makes it as close to being a passive investment as you can make it. It does. In that case, if, if you're doing those individually. Um, Absolutely. So typically for like a loan servicing company, you know, we know that, you know, your average property management company takes like 10% of a monthly rent payment. Yes. Uh, that's what they get paid. So mm -hmm. how typically do the loan servicing companies get paid? The loan servicing companies get paid. Um, they charge a fee, obviously, to um, to the lender, but yeah. it's very reasonable. They typically will charge between fifteen and thirty dollars a month per okay. note. It doesn't yeah. matter the size of the note. If the note is five thousand dollar loan balance or five hundred thousand dollar loan balance, it doesn't matter. And uh, servicing companies work in very large volume and scale, and that's how they, they make money. The, so they charge a very reasonable fee. Now, I've, I've known investors that uh, really want to manage the note themselves, and they can do that. But uh, we found it just, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't make For sense at all. 20 or $30 a month. It's yeah. worth every dime to have somebody else deal with all that. It is. And that's how you can you can scale up to a large portfolio. And then another yeah. thing, Jeff, there's a compliance piece. Some states, certain states, actually require that loans in their state are serviced by a licensed loan servicer. And so they take care of the compliance piece for you. Now, if you want to service it yourself, you, you have to go through the licensing process and, and do all that, but it just doesn't make sense for yeah. a loan servicer where there's, they're handling hundreds of thousands of loans. 
they're going to be licensed in every state where it's required. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but they also have the revenue to be able to do that instead of, you know, I have one and note. Volume. And, yeah. Yeah, I have one note in this one state and I've got to go through all the compliance and training and licensing and all that for something I could just pay somebody else twenty or thirty dollars a month for. Yeah. It's just silly. Um, so let's talk a little bit about note funds, because we talked about doing yeah. this individually and that's kind of your sunk cost there is let's let's call it twenty or thirty dollars a month per loan. Um Shifting over to a note fund, typically, how is the note fund manager paid in those cases? Well, there there are so many different configurations for that. Mm. Uh, fund managers will get paid a management fee, which is usually mm. a percentage, or um, it might be a percentage of profit or a combination of, of the two. And there's there's so many variations. Each fund that's out there, they're set up in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you, you, you may see all these different configurations, but usually those fees and costs, they're taken out of the revenue of the fund and not, mm -hmm. they're not taken out of the investors uh, payments out of their return. Yeah. So investor payments are usually net of any expenses or any fees so yeah. that that's how that's um, that's handled, right. and um, I, I've seen many different arrangements with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I know you've got like hedge funds will be two and twenty percent. You know, all those different configurations. Yeah. So that yeah, was kind of where many. I was going with is what's typical that you would expect as a as a note investor. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of variation, and and with note funds, there's also a lot of variation in the risk in okay. how much risk they take on. And like any other investment, Jeff, if you are um, risk averse and yeah. um, then your your note funds in, in with that are low risk, they're going to pay a lower rate of return. And if mm -hmm. you have a little bit more of a tolerance for risk, then you can go to different funds that pay a higher rate of return and they take on more risk, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's the same, same thing. And there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, really what's most important I feel is looking at all the parameters of the fund and the timing and the duration and make sure that it's in line with your needs mm -hmm. and your risk tolerance so that you're comfortable. Yeah. How would you, you know, as a as a layman coming out there, how would you evaluate a fund? You know, from a perspective, you you mentioned some of those aspects yeah. of duration and things like that. How do you how do you compare apples to apples, so to speak? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Evaluating a fund, really, one of the most important is looking at the fund manager, looking at their track record, their mm -hmm. reputation. I feel that if any investment, that's one of the most important things is what is the track record of the people involved and uh, above anything else. Now, when you're evaluating that, um, people that have been in business for a while, they have a good reputation, they can provide references, and um, their fund has all the proper um, registrations and everything with filings with the SEC. I've seen, I've seen investment sponsors go out to raise capital from investors and they may try to cut corners on, uh, some of the SEC regulations and the mm -hmm. compliance stuff. That's a huge red flag. I, I yeah. feel <laughs> so it's important to, uh, ask about that and understand understand how that's set up. And then um, next after that is understanding what kind of assets are being purchased in the fund. What's the business model? What is the investment thesis for the fund? Each one is different. And so mm -hmm. understand, understand what that is. Uh, a lot of it comes down to expertise and experience as well as market conditions, right? Um, Real estate cycles always impact the financing of real estate, and so market conditions change. And um, as investors, we have to adapt to that, 
right? Mm-hmm. We have to may have to approach a different strategy because we're in a different part of the cycle. When I started in note investing back in 2010, the landscape was very different than it mm-hmm. is today, as you can imagine, right? And so there's always always those those shifts, but being able to be nimble, adaptable, and having that background and experience and breadth of experience really is what helps to make it successful. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Um, so just, yeah, I think last question I would have in this whole situation, you know, you, you have that expected level of return, you know, so mm-hmm. we're kind of figuring out where this fits into someone's portfolio. So if I'm a stock investor, you know, long term, I should expect somewhere in the neighborhood of nine and a half to 10 percent somewhere in that range. Um, where do notes kind of fit in to that mix? Yeah, no, a- absolutely. Notes, I'll, I'll share with you some ranges, and this really depends on risk tolerance, but yeah, yeah. super safe notes and note funds are going to pay somewhere around 5 or 6% rate of return. Okay. Um, if you're willing to take on more risk, it can get up into 8 9 10%. Um, n- notes that are considered hard money loans to investors, to real estate investors, those get up in the double digits, 12 yeah. and 14%. That's a little bit of a different, uh, different yeah. type of asset. Yeah, you're, you're and, taking a lot more risk in those cases. Yes, you have, it's backed by, it's backed by real estate, but it might be real estate that's not yet worth what yeah. you're hoping it to be worth at that point. It, exactly. And, and so that that helps to give give some ranges yeah. um and so that that really well, gives you some understanding it's got some, you know it's got either dead money that's been yeah. sitting in cash um or is very risk averse and doesn't want to take on the risk of the stock market and you know i i think those are very reasonable rates of return for yeah or, that's like, hey, you know, or a mix of hey i've got mix. my riskier investments and i've got my super safe I need something in the middle, um, you know, and I think one of the benefits is it tends not to fluctuate as much as as bonds or anything like that that are in exactly. That it's it's quite stable. Uh, yeah. It is quite stable, Jeff, and it generates ongoing income and cash flow. Yeah. And so I love the idea of adding that as a component to the overall portfolio. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you you have some capital in stocks investments and different products like that mutual funds stocks they don't generate too much income those are more based on appreciation right Mm -hmm. now with notes they're not going to appreciate what happens is they're just generating ongoing cash flow and income and so that's a nice a nice way to balance out a portfolio yeah well, and I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like having bonds in the portfolio. It's just the difference is you're getting a portion of your, you're, you're getting interest plus a portion of your, your, uh, your principal, principal back every month, you know, yeah. and so you've got to be aware of that and look at it and say, okay, well, here's the actual cash flow. The return on investment is X, but the actual cash flow may be higher, but part of that is my own money coming back to me. Yeah, that that's correct. Through. That's correct. And, and the other thing is people investors understand a mortgage, right? Every, not everyone, but most homeowners purchased a house with financing. And so they understand a note and a mortgage, how that works and how you can't sell a property and pass clear title without resolving the lien or Mm -hmm. refinancing that uh, that's part of it. And so you're investing in something that's backed by an asset with hard collateral. And that really Mm. gives a lot of downside protection. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Fred, thank you so much. I mean, this was uh, just enlightening. Uh, You know, it's an area I know that I told you I'd I'd been interested in and and didn't know as much about it from a a real estate perspective. Uh, If someone wants to reach out to you or is interested in learning anything, what's the easiest way to get a hold of you? Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. A couple, couple ways. I, um, 
would love to share about my book. It's called The Little Green Book of Node Investing. It gives nice. a nice introductory overview to this asset class, how to get started, how to get involved. So for someone <coughs> interested to learn, it's a great place to start. It's available on Amazon. And for anyone that is interested to con uh, connect with me, please visit my website. You can go to fredmoskowitz.com. And if you prefer an easier spelling, you can go to giftfromfred.com and that'll take you right to my website where you can sign up for my newsletter or you can request a special report. I'm happy to send out by email talking about node investing in a little more detail. And here's another, another way, if you prefer to use your mobile device, you can text me by texting the keyword money to the phone number 215-461-4433 and then just follow the prompts. You know, I always love connecting with investors, meeting people and building relationships. It's one of the most important things that all of us can do as, inv as investors. And so I look forward to connecting. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, Fred, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Um, I would, you know, all that information that Fred just gave, just look down in the show notes and we've got all that listed there. So make sure that you uh, reach out. He's uh, he is the most knowledgeable person I've come across with this um, and, and really likes to share his expertise. So uh, certainly reach out and connect, get the book. And um, Fred, thank you for being on the show. And um we appreciate you being around. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me on. This was a fun, fun conversation. Appreciate that. And everybody, uh, we do these shows once a week. Uh, every Thursday, we put these shows out. So make sure that you are um, keeping an eye out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And um, we love comments. And if you have the opportunity to give us a rating, please give us a rating. And we will see you back here the very next time.